Why then would the Lord leave me in that state? Why would Jesus allow me, guys, to stay under such violent abuse from my family members? while giving me no avenue of escaping myself. I am so intelligent. Am I under a curse? Has some little Satanist, some occult practitioner, a little bit of an Alistair Crowley, eh? or an Anthony LaVey, have they sat on my prospects? Is their witchcraft so poignant that it cannot conquer, that it conquers, sorry, the, 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 the body of Christ? Hmm? Uh, the Bible says that some demons come out with fasting and prayer. A woman that I'm currently in a fast. It ends, currently is like the 13th or the 14th of uh, July. It ends on the 15th of July. I think I might extend it another month or another two weeks or whatever i keep fasting i've been fasting on and off copiously for the past nine years i'm also very prayerful i pray in tongues every waking moment when i am not busy eating or when i'm not drinking water or talking or whatever it is that i might use my mouth to uh, do or sleeping i'm always praying in tongues all day long so a woman that prayerful and a woman that constantly fasted, I'm also really quite above reproach. I am not partaking in any random secret sin. There's nothing that I'm hiding. I'm not fornicating. I'm not masturbating. I'm not watching porn. I, there is literally whatever it is that might be something that people can find as an error in me. It does. It, it's not there. Yes, I, I do sin. Every so often there are expletives at the tip of my tongue because I'm angry at the way that I'm being treated. My heart is, is being sanctified. I'm struggling with the body of death, Romans 7, but I definitely have a Christian walk. I am living a very uh, consecrated Christian life. I, essentially what that means is that get dynamite get bomb my prayers are fiery i am bringing down structures in the worst way one day's worth of prayers i don't know what it does in the occult but i am powerful the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much there is no way that god will go against his own word if that word is given me therefore my prayers are availing much I don't see, however, what it is that they're availing. So am I under a trap? Am I in a trap? Am I am I stranded? Uh, have occult practitioners put my stuff in a cage that I cannot unlock with one little prayer over a day? Because I pray literally all day long. If I'm washing dishes, I'm praying. If I am eating, I will not be eating. But if I'm sitting here watching something on Netflix, I am praying. I'm also careful to make sure that even that which I consume on Netflix is not going to stumble me. I deliberately choose shows that have no foul language or um, what is the sex in them. That is what under heaven it is that I am. I am quite responsible with my work as a Christian. For the better part of the time, all day long, I'm also watching content on YouTube that is Christian related. When I go to bed at night, I, I sleep to, um, you know, those uh, Psalms for sleep, uh, all night long, Bible uh, scriptures for sleeping. That's what I listen to all night long. When I'm busy getting ready after taking a shower, I'm listening to that in a loop. That's how I meditate on God's word day and night. I am blessed. I should be the most prosperous person on this earth. But by the standard, by the standards of this world, uh, according to health, wealth, and prosperity preachers, I should have a mansion by now, given my faith. I have a boldness of faith that excels that of many people in this squalor, in this horrific environment that I'm in. I am nonetheless that prayerful, that consecrated, that uh, repentant. That's the life that I'm living. I am literally above reproach as it is described in the scriptures. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. I'm pure. If at all I was one of the five virgins that have got oil in their lamb, my mine would be running over. I would have so much oil that it would literally cause my fingers to slip. If, for it to slip out of my hands the way that it is literally dripping down the glass, down the lantern. That is what under heaven is. It is that I've got as oil in my lamp. Therefore, my prayers literally should be bombing some stuff out here in these streets. I should, if at all, there was a little doll hidden by some river, Emlan Jenny, Ngabantoba Tagatayo, which is, that is burying me. It should have burned by now or gotten dissolved by the soil or been like, just, I don't know. Whatever it is that the Lord would do to make sure that stuff like that does not work on me. I'm not under a spell. I'm not under a curse. I am not a woman that is struggling with generational curses. I am not a woman that is struggling to conquer a spirit husband or a spirit succubus, incubus, whatever. I am not a woman that is under a curse. Do you know why? Because you cannot curse those whom God has blessed. What are you when you are blessed? I keep repeating this message over and over again. According to Psalm 1, this is what blessedness looks like. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. I told you. I pray all day and not only that when I sleep I listen to psalms for sleep or scriptures for sleep a soaked stream on a loop 10 hours wake up in the morning it's still playing when I'm busy doing whatever I'm doing washing dishes it's still playing I watch YouTube videos about Christian content Christian content basically all day long and the only time I watch Netflix is at night when I'm eating dinner for like an hour or two one or two episodes a show of which is not grieving too grieving anyway to the Holy Spirit that is the life that 
I'm living. I'm not partaking in pornography. I am not masturbating. I am not doing anything at all. That is a constant, secret, unrepentant sin. And I've been in this position for nine years nonstop. And nothing, I, 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 I dumped, I dropped. Licentious dancing. A year ago to a point where having gouged out that eye, I've lost my muscle mass. Because I'm struggling to go back to exercise because it's all that I know. So I've lost my muscle mass. I'm gaining some weight. That is what under heaven is the life that I am currently living. So since I meditate on God's law day and night, God says that I am like a tree then. Planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and whose leaf does not wither. And in all that I do, I prosper. So if at all I appear to be non-prosperous, what you must understand is that the definition of prosperity is what you need to take to change. The definition of prosperity, you need to change it. Psalm 1 goes on to say, Psalm 1 goes on to say, But the wicked are not so, but they're like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not be able to stand in the congregation of the righteous. The way of the righteous endures forever, but the way of the wicked will perish. So if the wicked get blown away by the chaff, my enemies who are wicked ought be blown away by the chaff. And yet it looks as if they're standing firm and strong. Look at them go. Look at them go. They are, however, they're also not going to be able to stand in the congregation of the righteous. It makes sense right now that I have no one in my life for the wicked cannot be in my life. Not only that, there will be a congregation of the righteous literally happening in a minute from today. It's called the rapture. We're going to be gathered to meet the Lord in the air after the dead in Christ rise first. Then we're going to go to heaven for seven years and they will continue to get more, more saints are going to continue to enter heaven through the tribulation by being martyred or other raptures that are going to happen in the tribulation, which I believe do happen. Revelation 12, Matthew 24, please go check it out in the middle way and also at the end of the book of Revelation. Uh, at the end of the tribulation, is the rapture, are the raptures going to happen? So the congregation of the righteous is up there in heaven. The congregation of the righteous is up there. God says that the wicked will not be able to partake in the congregation of the righteous. So what is my prosperity then according to Psalm 1? It is the fact that I'm going to be in a congregation with righteous men and righteous women, righteous beings, holy angels, God himself. I am going to be there because I have been blessed given that I've not stood in the way of sinners. Uh, blessed is a man. Walk not in the counsel of the wicked, stood in the way of sinners, sat in the seat of scoffers. I have delighted in the law of the Lord on his law. I have meditated day and night. Therefore, I'm like a tree, evergreen, planted by streams of water, yielding his fruit in the season. In all that I do, I prosper. My prosperity is in my walk with Jesus. It is the fact that I will see God, for I am pure in heart. He has made me pure, for it is his, his righteousness that has been imputed on Sorry, given me as a propitiation while my sin has been imputed on him. That is what is going on here. So my blessedness is going to be evidenced by the rapture. If at all, the rapture was, still, was only going to happen in another, in another 100 years, in another 200 years, then you would have seen my prosperity in a very observable way. But you are a wicked and a perverse generation that seeks after a sign. So God will give you no sign other than the disappearance of Karabo, the sign of Jonah, the sign of the Son of Man. He will disappear in the heart of the earth for three days. And then there's going to be what? A resurrection. A resurrection. Do you understand what I'm saying? So because it is where it is that we find ourselves in history, my blessedness therefore is underground and it will be evidenced by my gathering together in the air with the congregation of righteous men and righteous women, holy beings that are indeed with, uh, gonna come with God to get us. The Lord will meet us in the air. I believe there will also be holy angels. We're gonna go to heaven then, watch the Hunger Games. That's what's going to happen. My blessedness is clear. You cannot curse those whom God is, has blessed. And blessedness as it is described in Psalm 1, I am walking in it. Not only that, it is written in the letter to the church at Pergamum that the very same thing, that you can't curse those whom God has blessed. Balaam's era, Balaam's era, it's like the devil proper, I don't care, it can bark until tomorrow, but I'm going to carry on talking. Uh, Balaam's era, as it is described in the book of Jude, is also described in the letter to the church at Pergamum, all right? Balaam's era is essentially trying to curse those that God has blessed. Bla Balaam is this dude that loved money and was a prophet of God. However, he loved money and he therefore sinned against God in this uh, regard, very treacherously so, where because of money, Balak was offering him some coin in order to curse God's people and he couldn't. Why could he not curse God's people? Because they were blessed given that they were not walking in the counsel of the wicked, standing in the way of sinners, sitting in the seat of scoffers. Their delight was on the law of the Lord and on his law he was, they were meditating day and night. They were like trees planted by streams of water yielding their fruit in their season whose leaf did not wither and in all that they did they prospered. But Balaam then went on right ahead to counsel Balak the king 
at the time to basically cause God's people to sin against the Lord, eating food sacrificed to idols and partaking in sexual immorality. Then on that day, they're going to be curseable. Curseable. Do you understand? Indeed, they did just that. And indeed, Balaam was then able to curse them. Prior to that, however, he got rebuked by a donkey that spoke and an angel that met him in the middle of the street telling him, Balaam, what are you doing? You cannot curse those whom God has blessed. Therefore, insofar as I stay in Psalm 1 mode, in Psalm 1 mode, where I am not walking in the way of the wicked, sitting in the seat of scoffers, um, delight, walking out in the council wicked, sitting in the seat of scoffers, uh, standing in the way of sinners. Insofar as I can do that and continue to meditate on God's law day and night, I can't be cursed. So therefore, whatever would be the tantamount of a donkey will then speak to you. The tantamount of a donkey will speak to you. You will try to brill that donkey. The donkey will say, but what have you done? What have I ever done to you? Why are you hurting me? You cannot curse those whom God has blessed. That donkey will be seeing an angel. Indeed, currently, creation groans to see the sons of God revealed. Because wickedness on the earth is abounding so incredibly effervescently that creation can't deal. It cannot deal. It's been subjugated to tyranny because of what it is that we are. Creation, those donkeys, my cat, even the strands of fiber on my head right now are crying out for me to be revealed. When are we going to be revealed? Ultimately, the be all and end all of a revelation is when we get caught up. The uh, rapture is going to set the record straight as to who belongs to Jesus and who doesn't. All these randos be busy praying the Our Father, Bansabayza, uh, Rosary, and whatnot because it belongs to the Catholic Church after committing abominations. The rapture is going to set that record straight. It's going to be clear who was blessed and you will not be able to stand in the congregation of the righteous. You will rather be born or driven, driven away like the chaff that you are. I can't be cursed. So you're partaking in Balaam's era. The most you can do in Pergamum where Satan has his throne is kill a Christian. Martyr them. Make out of her Antipas who was martyred unto, like, uh, stood for Christ unto death Hona, in Pergamum. In per so if you want to make me Antipas, by all means, you're not going to make me Antipas through suicide. I'm not doing it. Like, I'm not killing myself. I'm not going to go and sin against God, having a stupid prayer. And then people see content like this on YouTube. And so therefore the name of God is blasphemed. I'm not sending myself to hell. I'm not going to curse my own soul. People will have to literally rock up all up in my grill, grab a knife, put it in my heart, and then be like, aha, we've handled the Christian. We massacred the Christian. But you don't get to make me commit suicide. You don't get to frantically, uh, you know, infest the, the demonically possessed body of my mother and make it worse against me. And so that caused me to put a sock in my exhaust pipe and inhale the fumes, carbon monoxide. And then I enter into heaven, expecting God to welcome me in heaven when he has made it clear that thou shalt not test the Lord your God. I'm not taking myself out. So all the, these cowards with their death curses, they just need to come here and shoot me dead. If at all you want the outcome of my life to be that of Antipasis in Pergamum where Satan has his throne, you're going to have to come and end me my, yourselves. South Africans, you're going to have to be the ones to pull the trigger. You're proper going to have to be the ones to rock up here and put poison in my food. The Lord said that disciples will eat poison in the last days and it will not kill them. So you better like hack my head off to make doubly sure that I'm gone. Because poison, I might just survive that. That's what's good. Yeah, I am blessed. I cannot be cursed. It is Balaam's era to imagine that you can curse me. But just like Balaam, you literally give a dude an idea to cause God's servants to eat food sacrificed to idols and indeed partake in sexual immorality. So if I won't do that, you then are like, die? Okay, fine. Literally, frankly, to die is gain and to live is Christ. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So I understand, I recognize thoroughly the glory of my death. However, it has got to happen the way that it happened with Stephen. Go and stone the dude to death and then he will see uh, clouds literally cracking open seeing the one seated on the throne and then in you know into uh, into your hands i commit my spirit shall i then say to the lord who i will see on the throne as you're busy stoning me as you're busy beating me to death as you're busy starving me to death as you're busy doing whatever in my death i will like literally drop tears down my eyes as i see god seated above saying well done my good and faithful servant you have fought the good fight you have ran the race you have kept the faith however i understand that if you make out me like Paul, where there is a thought in my flesh, a messenger from Satan, something that's really bugging me and it's not leaving. I might ask the Lord, and indeed I have, for like nine years straight, God, please take this thorn out of my flesh, it hurts, I hate it, like I can't deal. And God has seen it fit to leave it there. Why? Because his grace is sufficient for me and his power is made perfect in my weakness. When I am weak, I am strong. So I'm strong right now. All I do is deal with the thorn of no employment. Deal with the thorn of such jealous women that they will not help me. Deal with the thorn of such like sexually aroused men that they won't like aid me unless I do something for them. I'll deal with it until further notice. But you cannot curse me. You're going to have to succeed to make me partake in sexual immorality. It's the only way you can curse me. And if I won't do it, make out of me Antipas. But to be Antipas, you actually got to kill me. You got to do it yourselves. I'm not doing it myself. If therefore people want to attend my funeral service, I feel as if you need to become saboteurs of sorts. Yeah, you've got to find a way somehow. 
to try and get away with murder. But murder you gotta commit. But you must understand there will be no such thing as a murder by suicide. Not in a Christian life. No. I'm not doing it. If you want me out like a light. Rock up and be the one to snuff it out. Be the one to have the blood of a saint on your hands. Be the one to put me under the altar. That I might say to the Lord. When am I, when am I gonna get justice since I've been martyred out here in these streets. I've been beheaded. Be the one to cause society to cheer. Just like the two witnesses after they got killed. The whole world saw it and cheered. Yeah. Be the one to cause the world to cheer. Because you killed God's witness. But don't expect Elijah and Moses, if those are the two witnesses, to hang on a noose after having put themselves there. I'm not doing it. Uh. I'm not doing it. I'm not the proper. I will burp. Evidencing that I'm alive. So that you can rock up and be the one to stop all of my bodily functions. Every last rando walking these streets like Alistair Crowley or like Anthony LaVey, the Church of Satan. Like proper doing death curses on a sister that believes stuff like that. I would love to join heaven's uh, 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 class. I proper am exhausted of this body. I want the Lord to tell me, well done, my good and faithful servant. I've been running for a minute. I ain't gonna take myself out. I have not done it so far, and I'm not about to start. I will fight for my soul. It is a striving, strive to enter in. For many on that last day will want to and not be able. The body of Christ, if it does not come through for me, they will have to deal with God at the beam of seat. They will have to be told by the Lord that my daughter was hungry and you left and just fell to like uh, flip like a fishy outside of the ocean, nearly breathing her last. How many death curses does she have to survive? Pumira Bampete is my daughter. She's like Greece man from the occult, and she would not have had to be grease man because you did not help her out you did not cater to her the lord will judge them he will take gifts from them he will take rewards from them all the christians that keep watching me and are doing nothing for my case but end my life my goodness no nobody is gonna have my blood on their hands unless they shed it i'm not going to be murdered by suicide hey batung how many suicide do you guys know out there that have got honor after they die it leaves such a bad taste in everybody's mouth Kids whose parents commit suicide literally never ever recover. However, they somehow can have a normal semblance of a life, some kind of a semblance of a normal life if their dad died in a car accident. But if you make like Ricky Rick and kill yourself, your kids will never ever deal with that stigma ever. It'll literally just kind of sit on them with a badge. And Libatana, kill about brochu. Yes, stigma for suicide. Starting a generational curse, Kohai, since no one in my family has ever done it. Of suicide? I'm sorry, my mom might deserve to mourn me at my funeral, but she certainly does not deserve to have me hang on a noose and go to hell on her behalf. I'm not doing it. So persecuting me into suicide, given that that's never gonna happen, I'm therefore going to just be a person with a thorn in my flesh. Tip me like a domino, make out of me a bowling pin and roll that ball down the aisle. But understand, I'm not taking myself out. It's not happening. However, in the run up too, people are going to try to get me to do something or else. Like proper, that's the threat that is coming at my life right now. It's like, gotta have a compromise or else. Guess what the or else is? You will just have to live out the rest of your days in squalor, having nothing, no one coming through for you, dealing dealing with very harsh adversarial conditions under your family. And I'm like, yeah, Zini, to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Naked I came into this world. Naked shall I be extracted. God has given me. God has taken away. Yet in all that I do, I will ever praise him. And like Job, in all that I did, I did not sin against God. The devil will test me into oblivion. Do you understand? If I must die an old woman that is uncatered to, then by all means. However, I am never going to die an old woman that is uncatered to. Why? Because I am supposed to give this message in the run-up to a rapture that is most definitely happening. And after that rapture, not only will I not age, but I will look younger even than I do right now. I will be forever youthful. God would not be God. If at all he left me in this position unfettered. Do you understand? God would cease to be God because it would be ungodly of him to just leave me like this without there being some grander purpose for it and some another environment, some other space where he intends to give me everything I ask for in prayer. It would be blasphemous for me to imagine that he has forsaken the prayers that he told me very explicitly and I believed him in John 15 that if my words abide in you and you remain in me ask anything in my name and it'll be given you and then I do exactly that his words abide in me I remain in him and then I ask him for a husband I ask him for a children I ask him for a legacy in Christ biblical womanhood a ministry I ask him for a a a, a a purpose that is going to ev elevate him in the sight of men because of my life. And then he just chooses to bury me with YouTube having shadow banned me, with me going nowhere, with Facebook having shadow banned me, with me going nowhere. And like with my stats going nowhere, like this wishes appearing to have conquered me with curses. And then I just die a suicide death. Oh my, whoa, I abided in you, your words were in me. I asked and you didn't do? So you're, you're, you're a liar. You are a man to change your mind, son of man to lie. You are not God, you're not immutable for your word has changed like a shifting shadow. You are untrustworthy. Except, hello, 
That is blasphemy to think that way. I am catered to. God has given me everything I've asked for in prayer. Just press down, shaking together and running over already. It is just that right now. How does the Lord intend to answer my prayers? Eventually, the Lord guaranteed us answered prayer, but he did not guarantee us answered prayer within the time phrase that we set apart for him. I wanted to have seven children by the time I turned 40. I have none and I'm turning 39 in a few weeks. So really and truly, unless I have seven babies and one pregnancy and get married tomorrow, it appears as if though my prayers have not been answered. But here it is that I am sitting where I'm sitting, being gazed upon by licentious men and irresponsible women that allow their fellow females to just suffocate an intelligent woman that could interview very successfully for any job right now. And yet she's unemployed and they're watching me getting lambasted by an irresponsible family every single day. They will have to face God in the judgment. They might even get left behind realizing what they were supposed to do for really and truly when she was hungry you didn't give her food when she was naked you didn't give her clothes when she was just in destitution in prison and sick you did not visit her you did nothing of that nature and then you will ask god when did i not do this for you god and you will say you literally left garabo to languish and you just looked at her and said amen sister i'm praying for you watched her content and then moved on after liking on youtube as if though your one little like is going to do anything at all for a person that has been severely shadow banned this woman needs to get taken out of this where is the body of christ she got persecuted out of the church she got literally thrown out of the synagogues and those who persecuted do who persecuted her uh, were doing it thinking they're doing a service to god i am tortured in these living conditions so why does it appear as if though god has not answered my prayer no is that god will answer it just not yet the lord has already answered my prayers just not yet when am i getting everything that i ask for in prayer in the millennial reign i can't keep saying that so in the run-up to i work and i strive and i work and i strive so i can go up in heaven and watch the hunger games so deuteronomy 3 6 that god gave me where he said that he's about to judge man woman and child lay them destitute uh, like uh, lend them over to destruction yeah it's about to happen and when it happens i'm going to be up in heaven when i say be afraid be very afraid of me proper untabbing be scared of saints when you persecute them because one day they're going to rule and reign over you for a thousand years that's if you're on the earth you may very potentially just be in sheol because you either took the mark of the beast or god found you entirely unacceptable to stay for the millennial reign be afraid of people that you afflict because you think no one is coming for them be scared of the christian that is above a reproach and yet appears to have no answered prayer because they are going to be a comeback you literally cannot take in your stride you are going to be annihilated by the very people you are currently annihilating and you will be at their mercy one day at their mercy do you understand you know my family treats me like i'm lazy like i've never worked a day in my life like i don't actually long to work like i don't long to be independent like i could not care less to make uh, uh, an honest woman out of myself or something of my life that's the unfortunate way that witches treat their victims they will put you in a casket through a ritual and when then you are stranded unable to move left or right up or down they then will literally tease you for being lazy being unproductive being unprepared to do anything at all for yourself being the cause of your own demise and in my case despite the hard work that i do on youtube despite the constant studying that i'm always doing of world event guys i have got the level of expertise or knowledge of quite a seasoned journalist i'm like a reporter it's just that i just so happen to be aligning what's happening in the world with bible prophecy i find nuggets of information on the internet because i'm so full of research i have been studying for years just like that so like a person or a woman that has done really well for herself in her journalism career one day losing her job because some of the people that she covers decide covers covers on her stories decide to sabotage her whole career make sure that she's a ruined woman and can therefore never ever work again then when she's living in a cabin struggling to make ends meet they then turn around and say she's lazy when they sabotaged her career that's what i am the level of knowledge that i have in my bones about world events and just a random odd nuisance rubbish information is such that i am and can can't make a decision what you want to do they've made me live with an animal when then i uh, sorry the, the level of information that i have lots of people cannot answer me there was a day when i i took this ungrateful woman to the clinic when she was sick a hobola with bronchitis and i met a lawyer in the doctor's offices he made it he made sure that i found out that he was a lawyer that he had an appointment that he had to be at in order to do something or come up file some documentation with the magistrate courts with the magistrate court in pretoria i just listened to him rap on and because he was a lawyer i spoke to him like he was a lawyer 
I spoke to him like he had no knowledge of the law. I spoke to him like he was a man that was abreast of affairs with politics, current affairs. Because who in the world is a lawyer and does not know what's happening in South Africa? He stumbled here and there and could not answer many of my questions until he abruptly ended the conversation because he was embarrassed at his lack of uh, industry expertise. This is coming from a woman that does not have a job, that is going absolutely nowhere in life, that is doing nothing with herself apparently. And yet I was able to be more abreast of the law of South Africa about this lawyer i the just to help you understand what exactly i was talking to him about i was raising the current socioeconomic challenges that we have as a nation and trying to have a conversation with him about from a vantage point of the law how we could possibly go forward the power card crisis the issue with corruption in our government the issue with corruption in corporate south africa how it is that so many people are losing their lives their what do you call this their um, lifestyles their livelihoods because of corruption and since he claims to be indeed a corporate lawyer in particular i raised some of the issues using my knowledge or my understanding basically the sorrow that i endured at the hands of mtn but i didn't raise my story i just used it as an analogy or a metaphor and this random buffoon could not answer me i knew the law better than him despite only getting only up to like second year in my um what's this the law degree i was doing it mixed with a bcom so i wasn't doing an llb but i did some law adverts and i only got up to a certain level i did not do a full four-year thing and yet i knew more than him I not only knew more than him, I also st continued to study certain facets of law within the field of expertise that I was a part of when I was working in corporate South Africa. So since I was working for telecommunications, I understood some of the laws pertaining to that industry. I understood some of the laws pertaining uh, the, uh, what do you call this, um, software engineering industry, the... Uh, um, what do they call it? Whatever, man. Like IT, IS, that, that whole space. I understood some of the law pertaining that. So I continued to study, at least in a very specialized area. And here it is that I had more subject matter expertise than an actual lawyer. That is the person that I am. If at all I were to have conversations with certain people, it, literally trying to continue to run these conversations in their own industries. I'm not even trying to get you to escape your, in, your own industry. You should at least have know-how. And this is the kind of stuff that people observe about me online. I literally know what they imagine is too much. Except, what else is an academic going to do when they are gathering dust at the backs of their mother's houses having full access to the internet other than study? I know a lot more than I did because I literally have 24 hours to just find out random crap on the internet. With that level of knowledge, I'm then able to piece pieces of the puzzle together and realize that, oh, this is where we find ourselves in the prophetic timeline. Alongside gathering insights from actual saints who study this, the subject matter. And my intelligence and my understanding, my knowledge in these areas, then cause a bunch of intimidated souls who are running a country into the ground to pretend as if I am not a travesty. And also an entire family that knows that level of knowledge, of, of, of beastly intelligence that I have, to act as if though I'm lazy and have never ever gathered a salary in my life, neither desire to work. Abantu.